I, I have no idea what the volume would be of apologies. Uh, but, you know, even if it were in the uh, instances where a complaint was filed, there you go. I, I'm going to say that that's probably outside the scope of your duties and responsibilities. Well, I'm recommending a change in policy. So uh, that, that we're making a recommendation to the police chief that there be a policy that in the cases where there are complaints that uh, that there be, you know, a personal outreach to civilians in the same way that we recommended a change of policy regarding interpreters or anything else. Alrighty, so the video for today, the topic that we have, I'll get his face off the screen so you just have to look at my ugly mug. Uh, this was a complaint that was made by a citizen, and I want to describe the interaction as it was detailed in the Civilian Review Board. I'm not going to play that whole part of the meeting because they're very long-winded, they talk very slow, and they're very confused about the facts of the cases that they're discussing. So I'm going to go over that part with you, and the only part I'm going to play at the end is the part where they're demanding the officers go out and apologize to people who complain about them even when the officers have done nothing wrong. I'm sorry, I, I cannot say this without laughing. It's one of the dumbest things I've ever heard. And these people are like professional dumb talkers. So that's really saying something. So the incident that occurred, this was an incident where officers observed a vehicle that matched the description of a vehicle that was being used in criminal activity. They saw the vehicle driving around, driving down the street. They got behind the vehicle. They ran the tags. The tags of the vehicle did not come back to what was driving around. So if uh, your tags say white Ford pickup truck and you're driving a red Toyota Corolla and a red Toyota Corolla was being used in a crime earlier in the day, uh, that is something that officers deemed to be a clue, right? That's suspicious activities. And the officers, this is what we ask police officers to do. We ask them to act in this, in this case, try to apprehend the suspect or get to the source of the criminal activity. In this particular case, I believe it was a situation where the uh, license plates were stolen on one of the cars, something like that. I can't remember. Well, they didn't even go into the, the very, very specific detail, but it was something along those lines. So the officers did a felony stop on the vehicle. A felony stop is when, you know, the car is stopped up here. You have a couple of cruisers behind the car. You have officers get out and hold the driver at gunpoint. You know, officer or <laughs> driver, turn your vehicle off with your left hand. Take the keys out of the ignition. Put the keys on the ground outside of the car. With your left hand, reach out of the car. Open the door. Step out of the car. Face away from me. Walk backwards to the sound of my voice. You know, this is a felony stop. This is what we do when we have a, a, a stolen car, you know, um, there, I don't need to go into all the details, but all the examples of people who were driving stolen cars that had a violent encounter with police officers, often people driving stolen cars are out doing armed robberies. That was the exact same thing that happened in the city of Columbus on July the 6th, 2023 officers were in pursuit of armed bank robbers who were driving a stolen car when that vehicle was stopped the suspects got out started shooting at the police officers one of the officers was very seriously wounded and almost died on scene this is a very big deal so they do the felony stop they order the person back the person's complaining look i didn't do anything wrong i don't know what this is about the officers go they 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 run the vin on the vehicle it actually came back to the person that was driving the car and what happened was somebody stole this citizen's license plates. Uh, they then put fictitious plates on that person's car. If you don't check your rear license plate every time you go out and get in your car, you're going to be completely unaware of this. So the officers were investigating what appeared to be a very serious crime. And it turns out the person in the car was actually the victim. Uh, so when that person was upset about what happened, they called, they filed a complaint. The officers were exonerated 
in this circumstance. And the Civilian Review Board still felt bad for the person and said, you know what, we need to write a policy that even in situations where the officers were exonerated, if the person is still upset about their complaint, that we send officers out to their house to apologize to them. That's where this starts to get pretty stupid and pretty ridiculous. Um, now, one of the things that occurred was a uh, board member Willard McIntosh, he said, you know what, I, I'm not saying that we need to send someone out after the fact. What I'm saying is that the officers on scene when they do something like this, if they make a simple mistake, you know, a, a good faith error, that they should just apologize to the person that it happened to, and that would de-escalate the situation, and this person would not call and file a complaint. Um, the mistake that board member Willard McIntosh, who allegedly used to be a police officer, um, the mistake that he's making is he's assuming that the officers on a scene never apologize to people in those cases. Um, I what I was trying to get to is that those officers, while there on scene, after figuring it out, they, they can do the apology, not necessarily waiting for the sergeant or, or the lieutenant or commander to come out. Those officers, once they find out that that's a mistake, then they themselves can take the time, just like they were taking the time to, to uh, um, pursue or, or effect an arrest on a felon, they took that time. So maybe they can take five or 10 minutes to explain and teach and make her aware of what they did and why they did it. And maybe that would result in the person not complaining. Um, I was having a discussion with a civilian about this the other day. They brought a video to my attention. I can actually uh, bring that up right here. Um, this is a situation, I don't know where, where their faces are gonna be. Uh, this is a situation where the wrong car was pulled over. Um, I forget what state this was in, Arizona maybe. I'm gonna play a little bit of the video here for you. But it wasn't a completely different scenario. You know, the, the person who's making this video is an, is an asshole. Um, he's got 250,000 subscribers. So if I say that about him, it's probably gonna generate some heat uh, that's gonna come my way. But I'm assuming he just, all of his videos have an anti-police stance. And it says, officers conduct huge traffic stop off of sixth grade level educational mistake. Uh, so you already know his perspective on this. This was in a situation where officers in whatever state they were in, uh, I can't remember the state, doesn't matter for this cases, but they were, they were patrolling um, an area. I think it was like a casino area. And they saw a Dodge Charger leave the casino. Based on this officer's knowledge about crime that occurs in the area, they've been seeing a lot of Dodge Chargers being stolen in, in this recent time period. So the officer gets up behind the car, runs the tag. It was an out-of-state tag. It was actually an Arizona license plate. And uh, they ran it, or in Arkansas, I don't know, it was one of the A states. Uh, instead of running the tag with the uh, prefix of AZ, or instead of running it with AR, they ran it with AZ. So they ran the license plate with the wrong numbers at the beginning of it, the wrong abbreviation for the wrong state, came back as a stolen vehicle. They pulled the people out of the car. They did a felony stop. The driver of this vehicle was incredibly angry because, oh, I didn't pull it. I didn't show you guys. The driver of this vehicle was incredibly angry because as you can see right here, he has his children in the car. So he's very mad that the officers pointed their guns at the car and ordered them to exit the vehicle. One of the things that the officers did on scene that is something that we always do when we have these situations. I, I can tell you that I've pulled over the wrong car a bunch of times or been involved in the wrong car being pulled over a bunch of times because this is something that happens with a certain degree of regularity. Uh, let's say I am dispatched to the corner of Stop and Go Street on a call about, and it can be, it can be something very specific. You know, it can be a, um, a, a white PT cruiser with a purple racing stripe going down the center. 
that that the person in that car had a firearm and was just shooting at a house. They took off southbound on whatever street. I pull on to whatever street and I see a white white PT cruiser with a purple stripe down it. And not only do I see one, I see five of them things. That it's it's like a joke in police work that whenever you're looking for I'll use a more common car. If you every time you're looking for a silver um Honda Accord, every single car on the road is going to be a silver Honda Accord. So if you're out looking for violent suspects that just committed a violent crime, you're giving a vehicle description, you see a car matching that description, you pull it over, do a felony stop because it's the safest way to do it. And the people in that car, once you get them out of the car, it's obviously not the right people. I've pulled over um, grandmas before. I've, I've pulled over all kinds of people. We get them out of the car as soon as we realize the mistake or realize that they were not the people that we were looking for. We go up to them. We apologize to them like, hey, look, you know what? I'm so sorry this happened. Here are the circumstances about why we pulled you over. Um, you know, thank you for cooperating. You know, we don't. You know, we, we, we obviously, we don't have anything that we need to detain you for anymore. Please go about your day. Again, I'm sorry this happened. Um, I've done this hundreds of times probably. And I've never, I've never had a complaint go to internal affairs or the inspector general when I have had this kind of thing, because we're pretty good generally at apologizing to these people, making them feel better. And generally citizens understand that mistakes are going to happen as long as you're doing it. Um, with a, uh, a positive intention, people don't tend to get too upset about it and they don't file complaints. This situation was the same exact situation. I'll have, I'll play the video right here where the officers, once they realize their mistake, they apologize to the guy. They said, you know what? I'm sorry this happened. I don't know how this happened. It was a silly error. Um, I will own it. I'll take whatever comes my way. Over. I think she typed in A Z instead of A K A R. I mean A R. So sorry. Yes, A. She typed in A Z instead of A R. Yeah, I'm a best my club. I got concealed carry and everything, no, 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 bro. That's, that's why we told you. Yeah, I put a gun on myself for no reason, can dog. I, can I, I don't. I don't understand. She said her. Did you not run that out no, of Arkansas? I did. A R. So this is just, it's one of those moments of something that I saw in the civilian review board meeting that highlights a bunch of things. It highlights the fact that they, they are clueless as to, um, what officers are actually doing out there on the street. They think that if I pull over the wrong car and I do a felony stop, I'm just going to go rough these people up, beat the crap out of them. And then when I realize the, uh, that I made a mistake or I pulled over the wrong car, that I'm just going to take the cuffs off of them and tell them like, Hey, F you get the hell out of here. <laughs> like, that's not what happens. We're, we're nice people. We're nice to these folks. When, when these kind of mistakes happen, if we have somebody who we, you know, we make a simple mistake, a good faith error. And that person is really upset and we apologize to him on scene. We try to explain to him on scene, uh, the mistake that was made, the reason that was made and all of, all of those things, if they're still upset and they go file a complaint, um, you know, it, it doesn't mean that we've done the wrong thing. Uh, you know, if the officers are exonerated, there's no need to go back and apologize to that person again saying, Hey, look, you know, I'm sorry that your feelings were hurt. Um, and I'm also sorry that we're not punishing the police officers. Like this is, this is a silly thing. Um, if you watch the entire argument and discussion about this, I, I could bring it up. Maybe I'll make that a supplemental video and I'll put that out later. Uh, it's interesting because there's actually several people on the board who, who argued in support of the police officers, uh, saying, listen, this is an honest mistake. The officers were trying to do the right thing. You know, if there was a criminal out there committing acts of violence, driving this car with stolen tags on it, and an officer got behind it, you want police officers to stop that car and you want them to be as safe as possible when they're stopping that car. At the end of the day, that is what the police are hired to do. And you can't, you can't find fault in the police for doing that. If you start handing out discipline for officers that are, that are making good faith mistakes like that, well, first of all, it's not going to go through 
the arbitration process and the appeals process, so you're wasting your breath. But secondly, you're actually discouraging officers from going out there and trying to do the right things. Um, I don't know. I, I think I've yammered on for maybe a little bit too long here. Uh, this one just really kind of made me chuckle, made me scratch my head a little bit. Um, I'm going to get out of the way. I'm going to let Pastor Nathan from this Columbus Police Civilian Review Board try to explain his perspective on this. You've already heard my perspective. Um, that's where I'll leave it. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you guys later. Chair, sure, I, I would like to um, pick up on uh, Member McIntosh's uh, recommendation. Um, <clears throat> I, I have no idea what the volume would be of apologies, uh, but you know, even if it were in the uh, instances where a complaint was filed, um, it doesn't seem to be that that many that were having uh, complaints filed, a mistake made. We we've had a few, but in the course of the several hundred cases we've gone through, there's only been a handful that I can recall. And, you know, we're here to uh, attempt to, uh, part of our role as, as the Civilian Review Board is to attempt to bridge this lack of trust, the, the alienation between uh, the public and the police, and uh, I, I would support, uh, I, I think that's a wonderful idea, frankly, to uh, have police officers uh, reach out to complainants where there hasn't been a, a, a breach of policy, but there's been a, there's been a violation. And, uh, and so, uh, I would support a recommendation that we have, you know, a personal personal connection. So there you go. I'm going to say that that's probably outside the scope of your duties and responsibilities. Well, I'm recommending a change in policy. So uh, that that we're making a recommendation to the police chief that there be a policy that in the cases where there are complaints that uh, that there be, you know, a personal outreach to civilians in the same way that we recommended a change of policy regarding interpreters or anything else. And I'd, I'd probably take some time after the meeting to discuss it with Ms. Ross in terms of like the bargaining agreement and FOP and whether that's problematic or not. Okay. And is there a way for us to, as a civilian police review board, do that? I mean, or charge or ask the IG's office to, to do that sort of um, follow-up engagement? Because, I, I mean, I agree that generally there should be some sort of, you know, uh, there might not be a violation of policy here in a particular instance, but clearly there's a situation that, you know, you, were, you felt you were wronged, and in this case there was mistakes that happened. Um, so I don't know if that's something we do, CPD does, or public safety, the city does. I'm just, I'm interested in that, if that's a possibility. I, again, I'm going to just caution about a, some sort of policy related to offering apologies. Uh, you know, just, again, tread lightly, and I, I would want to consult with Ms. Ross about that. Um, you know, again, it may be outside the scope of the IG's um, duties and responsibilities as well, you know, in terms of if you make some recommendation directing them or asking them to consider doing that want to confer further with Ms. Ross. Is there a it, practice? Well, let me just say this, too. 